on the suggestion that dog owners should have third-party insurance. Let's find out why. Good morning now, how are you? Good morning, Matthew. Thank you for, oh, your, well, thank you. Thank you for your time. So now, why should uh, dog owners have third-party insurance? Well, I regard dog ownership as something similar to car ownership in the sense that um, if you want to be a dog owner, you should be a responsible dog owner and that insuring your dog against injuring third parties is, is part of that. Wouldn't that come under your, your home policy anyway, if you have home insurance, that uh, that it, comes with a public liability aspect, usually of 10, maybe 20 by now, million dollars? Uh, usually it does, but I've come across, I mean, part of this was due to my frustration at having represented a number of clients who've been attacked but who haven't been able to sue because the owner of the dog doesn't have insurance yeah. or the assets to pay compensation. So, so if they don't have insurance, then really, home or contents, building or contents, then th they should take it out, essentially, if they've got a dog? Yes. Hmm. Um, so what happened in those cases where someone's been bitten and not being able to, sh to sue? Is that essentially the outcome? That, unless the council has prosecuted the owner yeah. under the legislation for allowing the dog to wander at large or for not properly controlling the dog, um, in that case, the uh, victim can pursue compensation under the Victims of Crime legislation. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, uh, if the owner is not prosecuted, the um, victim has no recourse if the owner doesn't have insurance or the means to pay compensation. Are all council areas the same? Would the, would the same rules apply across the, the greater Adelaide metro area or indeed the yes. state? Yeah? Yes, so, so, throughout the state. So different bylaws wouldn't make a, a, a difference? No, the legislation is South Australia-wide and all councils would, would prosecute. Yeah, OK. So, basically, for all dog owners listening who might suddenly have pricked up their ears as we started this segment, uh, um, if they've got the home and contents or the building cover, they should be OK, shouldn't they? They should, but it might be worthwhile checking that the policy does cover them. Most policies do. There isn't necessarily specific wording in the policy referring to covering you for your dog, but mm. there are sort of general provisions that... Uh, capture your, the behaviour of your dog. But it's probably worthwhile checking. Mm. Can... And particularly if you have a dog that's, you know, a large dog that um, is of a certain breed that might be at risk of, of biting someone. Yeah. Could you still be fine regardless of uh, someone, a victim of, of a dog bite taking legal action? Could uh, somebody still be at risk of being fined by, by the council for either the dog, as you say, wandering at large or, uh, or any other uh, misdemeanours the council might come up with? Yes, well, the, the specific provision is the, the, the wandering at large provision. So even if the victim doesn't take action against you, if, if the council are notified about the attack, they can prosecute you independently of what the victim yeah, all right. wants to do. Yep. And uh, what about dogs injuring other dogs? Would that be something that would be covered as well? Presumably it would. Uh, perhaps. Um, it's a question, again, of whether, whether a third party... That includes a dog that's a third party. I'm not sure would that be the case. It may only be be humans. <laughs> ah, dog insurance, lovely. All right. Um, it's an interesting call, Mal, and, and obviously, as you say, it comes out of experience. How many of these sorts of cases have you had? I've, I've had many, and the, the types of situations where I've um, that I've come across is, for example, a, a, a homeowner who doesn't have insurance, and the dog attacks someone on the street. I've come across someone who is attacked by a dog in a home into which they were invited, but the dog didn't belong to the owner, it belonged to someone who was living at mm. the property temporarily, and um, the insurance didn't cover the dog because it wasn't the owner's dog. Mm -hmm. Do we have a lot of these cases in SA, a lot of these dog bite uh, human cases? Well, th th there, are, there are enough to make it worthwhile considering, yeah. and um, they don't seem to be getting any less frequent, I can certainly say that. Yeah. Do you think people are more aware, though, of the risks? Not necessarily. Um, I certainly don't think they're aware of the risk that they could be sued. I think they might be aware of the risk that they could be fined, mm -hmm. but not necessarily sued. Yeah, all right. Um, an interesting discussion, Mal. Thank you for your time. You're welcome, Matthew. Mal is uh, a partner, Mal Byrne, at um, uh, Tyndall Gask Bentley Lawyers, and uh, his call is get some third-party insurance if you own a dog.